from the East Indies, of India, and there's big money there. That that was one of the really pushing Spices a lot still. of things across the docks in Amsterdam from this East India Company. And the Dutch are getting ships in and out like the Dutch and the English and almost nobody else. Yeah, okay, for example, the Dutch and English are getting three and four and six ships a year back. The the Danes. Danish East India Company sent 70 ships in 40 years and got six back. Yes, Mark. Something something for, for, for new writers and, and following the problem. You throw something at it. But Depends. If, you, if you want to write uh, what we call a flash of light story, you know, the, the first the first what? evidence, you know, the first time a couple of days afterwards. But Paul, let's we, we, we've we've seen a lot of those. <laughs> Okay, but if, if that's what you here. want to write to start out, we can read it. it. We can read, read it. We've actually had one after I'd come down flat-footed and said, <laughs> "No, no more, more flash of light stories." Our art director Garrett Vance wrote one that I could not pass up. So it's possible. It's just the complication with going back to 1631 in this series is that it might conflict with something else that has already been written. If on the other hand, if that's what you want to do to start do out it. with, go do for it. it. We'd rather you didn't it. do any inventories in your story because we don't actually care what they had when they came back. Um, they had more than, than they had more than enough to to do very well on. And and you know we could if that's what you want to do for your first story, go ahead. I will warn you that we're going to rip it apart. That's what we do. And probably not all. But, but we might buy it. You never know. If you come up with a new twist on it. I mean, yeah, yeah. Garrett's new twist was that was actually, his first story was called Bird Watching. And it's the first bird watcher that came back that was ever mentioned in any of the stories. You know, mine was sheep. And it was a flash of light story. Now, uh, you bear in mind that you can have a story that's in an area where there's already cannon, but the cannon is sparse. So it gives you the advantage that you have a framework to attach yourself to, but where you don't have to read uh -huh. quite as much as you would otherwise. There's yeah. Just to give you an example, take the Siege of Amsterdam. It obviously was dealt with by Eric in a couple of stories, but hardly anyone else's touch with. During a siege, I can guarantee there were stories <coughs> of great drama and human interest to be told that do not involve the couple of lead uptimers mm -hmm. and downtimers that Eric was focusing upon, but nobody has told yet the There's stories story. of anybody else that was there. What and happened you when food pick got up. scarce? Uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. One of the things that everybody has to remember is that what Eric was trying to do when he wrote 1632 was not, Eric, is, Eric does not believe in the great man theory of, of, of how history works. It's alien uh, to, his, to his thinking. So what he did was he wanted to look at what would happen if some plain, ordinary folks had this happen to them. Um, I gave um, somebody a writing assignment yesterday. Um, I said, go find a village. Pick a village outside of the area where Grantville actually controls it. So outside of the state of uh, the state of Thuringia, Franconia, someplace where the, um, the uh, uh, News. contributions of Grantville are muted and probably just by rumor and things like that and start thinking about who lives in that village and what's been going on. The village has been there for umpty ump hundred years. The families don't change much. Um, um, there was a famous case of a lawsuit that continued what how long 75 years or something like that through three generations of the family. The, that's, that's drama. Um, and if you want to try that, um, it, it, it's, it, it's easier to, to do that because you don't have to worry about what's going on outside the village. Um, you can make up, you, you know. You can make up stuff inside the village. You can make up the people that are in the village. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a historical figure yeah. anywhere. 
and you don't have to you don't have to worry about using somebody from the grid uh, or anything like that. If I you love do want stories. someone from the grid, you have to claim the character. Just put up a line, ping Virginia character claim in the 1632 tech conference and ask her to claim that character. And the claim is usually the claim is good year. for a year, a year can be renewed. Uh, I keep a register of them. Uh, it is available every time I do an update. Uh, Karen puts it into the CSV so you can sort on it. Uh, not Karen. Karen offered uh, one of our authors who, work, who Jared, works Jared, out Jared. of New Zealand so he doesn't come to the cons. Uh, we have authors in our art director is in Thailand. Uh, we met him last year. Yeah, mm -hmm. he came to just to see us. Mm -hmm. but, but remember that, again, we're up in 1635, 36, 37 now. That's where the main books are being written. Grantville had a demographically accurate policy population distribution according to the 2000 census, which means that it was heavily, disproportionately elderly. There was a bad depression in the area in the 1980s, and a lot of young people who were at that time young adults moved out of northern West Virginia. For jobs. So we have already had about 900 of the originally transported people die of mostly natural causes peacefully. And so far, I think I'm the only person who has written anything about funeral homes in Grantville. But they will, I assure you, be one of the major social centers in the town. Well, <laughs> one of the most active Use uh, businesses to get Dan Wells to write. I should that. mention this is probably Stop. good a time as any that besides the grid, we have a second and the uh, search engine. We have a third resource for writers for planning purposes, which is story time frame. And Story Time Frames was created by Virginia, and somewhere around nine or ten, I sort of took her version, which was in the RTF table, and converted it to an Excel spreadsheet version with help from uh, several of our other writers to get old data in. And essentially, what it does is it shows the beginning and end of each story that's published in the Gazette. So if and you're the books, and the, and the books, yes, yeah, so all the stories. All the published uh, stories. So if you're writing something that is set in, say, spring 1635, you have a way through sorting that of seeing what else is might going be on. in spring 35, where you might want to look up that particular mm -hmm. story. Especially if you're sure in Magdeburg or Grantville or now, somewhere close. The, in terms of how that works, uh, obviously I'm looking at the stories to try to figure out where they start and stop. And sometimes they make it easy for me by saying, having a date slug at the beginning like early 1635 and other times you're working on clues like they're saying you know the the birds are chirping then the, this uh it's a nice a, spring a, day usually I'm warm spring day and so i think okay made. spring and then i start looking for clues to try to figure out as a 33 it's a 34 is a 35 and sometimes there are no clues whatsoever and i end up writing to the author and saying is it when did this when happen? <laughs> and I like it to at least give me a year or comparable period as a start. And it can be a month, it can be a season. And I don't really it's record not that any yeah. more detail than the month of start. 
And sometimes the authors get back to me and give me a period, and sometimes they don't, which is why the version on the Gazette that's posted on 1632.org is not as up-to-date as the version that's on my personal computer, because there have been an author or two that have not gotten back to me, and eventually I'm going to decide for them, but I haven't gotten around to it. Got How many authors do we have? Oh my gosh. At, at the, at, at Nine the last, zillion. Uh, at, the, at the last time I looked, I believe there were 300 authors that had something in an article, at least one article or oh. Gazette story. Oh. Um, and the let, and I'm going to have to one day update to give you what the real world word count total is. It's considerably higher than the numbers we had because it was actually running through only Gazette 32 or 33 the last time. Yeah, I was another. Uh, actually, the most recent one was when we were doing the stuff for the movies, and so that is where I would will find the high, the most. You're right. Yeah, yeah, a whole well, book has come out since. How many then. words generally are in an article? I Paula likes a thousand words. <laughs> Paula likes five thousand words. Paula Doesn't likes matter. good writing. Be quiet. <laughs> write, write whatever the story requires. Write the story you want, and my the thing I tell people all the time is a story needs to be as long as a story needs to be. If you write a very long one, I may have to split it into pieces in order to fit it into the gazettes, because I have a word count limit, which <coughs> Eric just raised to 100,000 words. Yay! Yay! By adding the but, tax spike. But, but, I like to keep 20 to 25 percent of that for nonfiction articles that are applicable. And now I've got Time Spike that we may be publishing mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. But we did get a little bump in the word count. Um, ideally, if you really, really want to get published real quick, give me five to seven thousand words and I can fit that in almost anywhere. I can tell but, you that for me, the sweet spot for writing tends to be for writing fiction tends to be in the eight to 12,000 word range. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I you know. would say the same for me. Uh, yeah. The stories, I have written shorter stories, right. uh, but I have written longer stories. Uh, but left to myself. It's harder to do it in one issue. Right. You, you can write something you know that's shorter. Uh, I've seen a 900. If you look story. at Kim's story, Mayfake at Solling and Nicht, uh, it's short, but it's great. Yeah. And uh, for tech well, articles. The Buddha story was another yes. one. Yeah, 995 yeah. words. It's one of the all time favorite stories. And for tech mm -hmm. articles, the, 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 the aiming point that I use, and, and between Ivor and I, we have a, a lot a good chunk of tech say. articles. Uh, the, the aiming point I use first is you don't want to talk down to your readers, okay? That's death. Uh, <coughs> the readers will hate it. And the other thing is, is you don't want to put something in like this anthropologist that I was reading last month where only seven other people in the country can understand it. So, you know, popular science level. And I find that after about 6,000 words, a tech article starts to drag real bad. Unless it's chocolate. Unless it's chocolate. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll give you an example of a tech article we never could publish. And it was, we asked Danita Ewing to come up so, with something on blood typing. And it was so medically, clinically detailed and technical that none of us who first read it could understand it. And Danita, who has a P 